We turn this evening to the urgent warning now that four countries are on the brink of famine. Bus after bus packed with refugees stream in. According to an article in the New York Times, four countries, Nigeria, Somalia, Yemen, and South Sudan, are at the risk of or have already been declared areas of famine. Famine is declared when one in five households in a certain area face extreme food shortages, more than 30% of the population is acutely malnourished, and at least two people for every 10,000 die each day. When famine is declared, many people have already suffered and died. Famine is occurring in these countries because of drought, food shortages, disease and uprisings, leading to civil war and destruction. Food and medical help are limited in far and distance from many of the villages that are in need of help. While it is not comparable to famine in underdeveloped countries, there is hunger in our own backyard. While Somalia, South Sudan, Yemen, and Nigeria do not have the capacity to solve this problem, the United States does. Right now, there are 23.5 million Americans, including 6.5 million children, who live in what we call food deserts in the inner city and in rural communities. People often associate instances of widespread extreme hunger or famine with severe turmoil in underdeveloped countries, when in fact there are issues of people being affected by hunger much closer to home, specifically right here in Washington, D.C. Food deserts are areas usually low income in which many residents cannot easily get to stores that sell affordable, healthy food what he calls food deserts in his hometown, vast stretches where people have no real access to quality groceries. That, Pierce insists, needs to change. Non-government organizations such as the Food Empowerment Project, DC Greens, and DC Hunger Solutions are working together to find ways to bring healthy food to Washington, DC areas such as Ward 7 and Ward 8 that are in dire need of access to healthy food. Ward 7 and Ward 8 are designated as food desert locations because Ward 7 has two grocery stores for 70,064 residents, while Ward 8 is down to one grocery store for all 78,686 residents. Here at Georgetown, the Center for Social Justice Research has programs such as the After School Kids Program, DC Reads and DC Schools Project that educates children in low-income areas usually across the Anacostia River on subjects ranging from literacy to food awareness, generally providing healthy snacks to the kids attending these programs. Michael Hobbs, in his article, Stop Trying to Save the World, discusses how something could seem like the solution to a problem, while the root cause is something different entirely. In order to get students in Kenya to perform better in school, school books will not help. Rather, medication for disease will. This could be a way of looking at food deserts in Washington, D.C. Rather than educating poor communities on healthy ways of eating, a better solution would be to build an affordable grocery store that has healthy food in an area that is in desperate need of one.